You know, it was really nice to focus on just one series this month instead of spreading myself too thin across a bunch of different series. But that basically means that my ongoing TBR stack has just exploded and I'm basically screwed. <laughs> Hello all of my otaku friends, my name is Prophet Taku, and welcome back to my channel for my April 2024 manga reading log. This month was a modest month of reading for me, just 36 volumes, but what I did read was quite a roller coaster, and it all stems from several series that influenced my feelings on several volumes that I read this month, and it was really kind of interesting to dive into those feelings and why these series had problems, and why I love the series that I did read, what are those series and what are those problems? Stay tuned to find out. So let's start with the big series. I read volumes 1 to 18 in the omnibus format of Ranma 1 Half by Rumiko Takahashi. The story is focused around Ranma courting a girl named Akane. They are engaged to be married, but of course there are potential suitors on both sides trying to get with both Ranma and Akane. So of course hilarious hijinks ensue. There are many other characters in this story who are involved and who can change into other things as well all centralized around this Chinese hot spring. The story is a simple one and there's no necessarily overarching storyline to this. This is episodic in that every half volume to three quarters of a volume is a different episode or a different arc centralizing around a story, a potential suitor, the crazy hijinks, and after that arc wraps up, it moves on to another arc, a different storyline, and that's what I love about this series. I love that it's a very laid back read, something really easy. I can sit down, I can read it, I can get a full story done in one sitting and I can just move on with my life. Characters are the name of the game in Ranma 1 half. What I love about Rumiko Takahashi works are the cast of characters and how each character is so interesting and has a great backstory and a lot of personality and Ranma 1 half is no exception. There are some phenomenal characters in here that are really really interesting and they do hilarious things and I just cannot stop reading this because I just love to see what my favorite characters are getting up to. There are several moments in this series that I was just laughing out loud and I love the creativity of all these different episodes it's all based around martial arts in some way shape or form so you have like tea ceremony martial arts you have figure skating martial arts and just so many more different examples of it and just the creativity that Takahashi sensei has to come up with to make these scenarios interesting and diverse it's just expert writing Robin one half is probably one of my favorite shows Shonen series that I've ever read. A great first half to the series. I can't wait to see how this ends up and I hope that it wraps up well. Now because of Ranma one half, I had some disdain towards some other series. So let's first talk about Don to Don. I read volumes four and five this month. I just wrapped this up in the last two days. And this is one of the series that I had a problem with because this is the exact opposite of Ranma one half. You have an overarching storyline with a forgettable cast of characters that I'm not necessarily invested in. And it's all crazy action with not a lot of substance in my personal opinion. There are some funny moments in here. The art is beautiful and the action scenes are great, but I just can't help but feel like I'm just bored while reading this. It's just nothing that really interests me. It's kind of that new Shonen Jump stuff, that darker side that I just really don't care for, to be honest with you. And I knew I was going to have a problem with Shonen Jump manga like this as I continued through the years of reading manga. And this is no exception. I've read through five volumes. I'm pretty sure I'm going to drop it, but somebody let me know down in the comments if I should keep going with this. I'm definitely willing to give it a second shot. But a Shonen Jump series I will be continuing on with, one that was on the chopping block but has really kind of righted the ship over the last several volumes, is Kaiju number eight. I read volumes eight and nine this month. I am loving the way this story is going. I am loving the progression of the story, the developments, not only as a world, but also with our characters and their powers. I think it's progressing really well. I'm really understanding the world and the different layers to it. I think it's explained very well. And that's why I'm really, really invested into the story. The things that are happening in these two volumes are amazing. It feels like all the things that's happened in the last several volumes have led to this 
twist and it's kind of turned the world on its head and that's what i love i love a crazy twist and some crazy moments and this has all of that and that's why i'm going to keep going with it next up here we have alice in borderland omnibus 9 this finishes the series for me and what can i say about the ending of this i thought that the ending was conclusive and it was good but it wasn't the best thing in the world in my opinion i felt like the lead up in volume 17 so the first half of this omnibus up to the big reveal was just kind of mad the the story the way it was going the explanations i felt like it was just filler and it was just wasting pages and i just wanted to just get through it so i can find out what was actually going on i just felt a little bit empty on the inside i wanted things to be more concrete in this world and it really wasn't in my opinion now a lot of people may say differently does that mean that this series is bad or it took a bad direction no i absolutely not i'm like really nitpicking here this got a 9 out of 10 for me a phenomenal journey a conclusive ending very satisfying ending i can walk away with this going yes i can't wait to recommend this to my friends i just am really nitpicking at these details here because this series is that good let's move on to square enix now only one volume this month we have volume one a new series smoking behind the supermarket with you i love the premise of this it follows our main character male he's a middle-aged business corporate man through the schlocks and toils of work of course he hates work but his one solace is that every day he goes home and he's able to stop by the supermarket and meet up with his favorite cashier one day he leaves the supermarket he wants to smoke somewhere he goes behind the supermarket and a surprise employee is there and she allows him to smoke behind the supermarket and thus sparks an interesting relationship and friendship as they spend their days smoking behind the supermarket together i love the stick of this manga i think it's done very well and it's a great platform platform for progressing a relationship it's very simple but it's very much well done and it's just great to see how these characters through their lives are able to just intermingle with each other through smoking behind the supermarket i love the art style it's a very interesting art style very simple but with a really interesting character design and i also love the setting of our older characters both are adults and that's always fantastic to read as an adult myself this is a great romance series one that is definitely one that maybe won't get a lot of talk or hype in the general manga community just because there's no anime adaptation yet and this is just something kind of avant-garde in terms of like you know coming from a square enix publisher instead of one of the bigger publishers but one that needs to be on everybody's radar definitely check out the first volume and see whether you like it i definitely did and because i read that romance manga i ended up not liking this romance manga that much and that is a condition called love volume 5. we are continuing on with our high schoolers as they continue their relationship this girl's first dive into a romantic relationship and he's obviously got a troubled past the problem with this manga for me personally is that it is just so cookie cutter there is nothing to this that makes me go wow this is something really really special i could care less about the characters i actually don't really like the main character male which is why i'm probably going to drop this series there are some stereotypical tropes in here as well i just feel like this is something so stereotypical i'm riding on a freeway at 65 miles per hour through texas there's no trees there's no buildings there's no signs it's really really boring and i'm just trying to get to the end of texas so i can move on to new mexico and maybe find some good food <laughs> so yeah i'm sad that this one's gonna go but i think i'm gonna give one more volume digitally a try to see whether i'm gonna officially cut it because it seems like volume six is the big mic drop moment there's some big drama that happens and some backstories that get revealed maybe a little bit too late to be honest with you all right moving on to seven seas we have two series here two series that i absolutely love first off is volume three of my girlfriend's child this continues to be an absolutely phenomenal series about teen pregnancy i love the characters i love the respect 
to teen pregnancy and the complications and the intricacies of navigating this life after conception. It's really, really interesting. And I love to see our main character's growth. I love to see a healthy relationship as well. This has everything going for it. An underrated underground shoujo series that everybody needs to have in their collection and a great manga to put in some school libraries, to be honest with you. I think this would do really, really well. And I also read volume seven of The Mashable Cat is Depressed Again Today. This is another great series. One of my favorite comedy series of all time. I love our main character, Cat character. He is hilarious. I love the four coma style. I think it makes this series flow very well. And I think the episodes are great. It's a total laugh out loud manga. It does everything right for me. It dives into cats, which I absolutely love. I can relate to it because of the schlog of being in the workforce and she hates going to work. She's just completely dependent on this cat to live. It's really, really funny, kind of a, like a freaky Friday type of thing. So that's why I love it. And I definitely think you should check this out over the anime. I did forget one more thing from Seven Seas, but one that I felt very much indifferent about and one that actually kind of disappointed me, Yakuza Fiance Volumes 4 and 5. I did end up dropping the series after Volume 5. Here's my problem with the series. I like the main characters. I like the Yakuza aspect to it. But what I don't like is the storytelling and the lack of context to all of our different characters in this world and the different political relationships going on. It just feels like it continues to move on and on with the story. And you're like, what is going on here? Like, why is this important to me? Why should I know about these things? And what this did was in this arc that I was currently on, right at the very end of the arc, it kind of explains some things which helped shell some things out. But it was just a little too late because I couldn't enjoy the actual arc itself while it was happening because I wasn't invested in it at all because I was just confused. I was just trying to figure out what was going on. This is not the first time Yakuza Fiance has done this. They've done this in every single arc so far. And so because of that and because of how frustrating it is for me to read it, I'm just going to go ahead and drop it. Let's move on to Yen Press here. First up, we have volume one of I Want a Gal Gamer to Praise Me. It follows this boy who is very, very shy and he wants to get better at this video game. He ends up hiring a coach, ends up being this very popular gamer girl here. But the whole shtick is that she goes to the same high school as him, thus starts their interesting friendship together. This manga is fine. It's an episodic manga. I can see the shtick getting old about this boy getting better at video games. Doesn't really dive into the video game aspect of it, more into the coaching aspect of it. You get into the tropes of incidental touching and stuff like that. I don't know. I can see this getting old really fast, so I'm not putting too many cents into this. I'm just enjoying the ride for what it is. So we'll see how many volumes this one lasts me. Next up, I read volume two of Reborn as a Vending Machine. I now wander the dungeon in Isekai series following a guy who gets reborn as a vending machine. It is a great manga adaptation. The only thing that I have a problem with is that the cool aspects of the vending machine powers do not get shelled out in the manga, which is disappointing because it's really cool to see the vending machine go through his thought process and like why he does the things that he does or like come up with these new creative ways to interact with the world as a vending machine. It does not dive into that at all in the manga. It's all the action and the events and they're just moving things along long really really quickly to be honest with you so do i recommend the manga yes i do but honestly i really recommend the light novel let's do a manhwa here we have omniscient readers viewpoint volume two this was a good volume lots of info dumping in this volume about the world not a lot of explanation so sometimes it's a little bit hard to follow but i am enjoying this post-apocalyptic type of manhwa following this guy who reads a web novel up to the last chapter and then the web novel merges with the real world. So now the whole world is thrown into chaos. Very, very interesting. And he knows obviously what is going on with all the different people and monsters. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's very interesting. I like the world and I'm curious to see where it's going to go from here. The series I finished this month is The Essence of Being a Muse. I read volumes two and three and it follows this girl who's trying to start a new life after coming from a repressed home. She wants to become an artist. I thought it was just okay. I like the art aspect to it and the journey that she goes through with art. What I don't like is the dark drama part of this series and how it's shelled out at the end. I understand the message they're trying to say, but it feels like with our main character's feelings and reactions to everything that happens, it just 
seems like a really weird split to me in terms of what the author's trying to say but then like our main character's reaction they're just like oxymorons on each other so it just feels like the story is incomplete like you want the main character to go with the author but the main character is like i'm gonna do what i want so is it worth a pickup and a read yeah i think so at three volumes i was entertained and it was interesting to read is it one i'm gonna keep in my collection no it is not so if you are interested in this let me know and last up here we have my Gemini this is a one shot and it follows our main character boy here who is friends with two identical twin brothers Jekyll and Hyde one day one of the brothers dies and so this boy in the middle is trying to figure out who is alive is it Jekyll or is it Hyde it's an interesting mystery that does a disservice in the actual story and the actual reveal and kind of the shtick of this manga I felt like it was just anticlimactic I just didn't feel like it was anything crazy to me I thought this was gonna be way more intense than it actually was does that mean that this was a bad story no there's definitely some great heartfelt moments in here and our characters are interesting enough i think our main character male the boy with the red hair is just really boring and i could care less about him i really care about the jekyll and hyde is this something i recommend to people N no i i don't i don't think it's worth the pickup which actually kind of hurts me to say it because I actually did kind of enjoy this read. I'm not keeping it in my collection, but I just can't convince somebody to spend some money on a physical copy of this just because I know for a lot of people, this is going to be a one and done type of read. And because the mystery is so anticlimactic in my personal opinion. So that is my manga reading log for April 2024. As you can see, it was quite a roller coaster of reads this month. I will continue on my journey with Rama one half in May. I'm hoping to read a lot more as the school year is coming to the end. Thank God I barely got through it. <laughs> as always, if you enjoyed the content of my videos, make sure you hit that like button, tap the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you know when more of my videos come out and I will see you in the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.